Doombots, Tony Skinjili here to talk about challenges today. Challenges are multi times a week events that will allow you to gain access to more resources. Uh, you see these in literally every type of game like this. The only thing that changes is how hard the fights are and who you got to use. So I'm just going to real quick go ahead and click through a handful of these events to show what you need. So combat endurance. Uh, participate in battles to earn XP tomes. You need XP tomes to level up your heroes. The reward structure for these are based on how high you can do, and obviously they become more challenging as you go on. So just to show right now for my roster, I'm, avail I'm able to do challenge level 9. It has a recommendation, hero 52, gear, six, gear tier 6. Now, there is no restriction on this one, so starting at the very beginning of the game, you can use anyone you have to gain these and as you go on the rewards are greater clearly uh, that's just how progression works so there are a bunch of different ones they have their own kind of tenor basically every sunday they're all available and then monday wednesday you know because there's an, e an even number of them there'll be two available twice a week or so and then sunday is everything so we'll say I don't remember the days off the top of my head. Literally at any time you want, you can check them anytime but a Sunday and determine when the next one's coming. But there is a cadence to them every Monday and Thursday will be one. Every Tuesday and Friday will be another. Every Wednesday and Saturday will be the other two. And they're just going to go across. The one thing I want to convey in this to everybody is do not, under any circumstances, regardless of what anyone tells you, prioritize completing these over anything else. One thing that people constantly get wrong in uh, mobile gaming in general, especially a game with a freemium model where you could play for free, but the more you spend, the better you are, is they put certain things on a pedestal. They put uh, ability materials or gold or gear on a pedestal and say, well, the faster you get it, the better you'll be. The problem is, with that logic, you can apply it anywhere and it will make sense. Hey, the fast, the higher, you know, the higher up you get in the gold challenge, the more gold you'll get. Yeah, but also the higher up you go in, in the uh, honing your skills challenge, the more ability, you know, materials you'll get, the more uh, XP tomes you'll get, the more gear you'll get. So. There is no real reason to prioritize characters specifically to com complete these tasks because everything is relevant. You have to use it all. What you should do in general, if this is something you're looking towards, is prioritize characters that are good and have extra value. For example, in order to get gear for defenders and warriors, you need strong fighters and tacticians. In order to get gear for rangers and tacticians, you need strong healers. Now, in this game, there are probably about six or seven healer class characters, of which maybe three of them are good characters. I don't think you're going to have a great time, as you can see where I am right here, over-investing in healer class characters just to get a little bit more gear than you would normally. I think what works best for everybody, just in general, you know, comment if you think I'm wrong, but it's working on the teams that make sense and then accruing enough value over time that you can easily do this. I actually have the same opinion on champion, on campaigns and, and getting stuff. If you notice that you can't complete a campaign, unless the thing you're looking for is a character you really need to farm or a gear piece you desperately need, it's kind of a waste to just focus on working on characters just to get further in the campaign. Just build your characters the way you can. As long as you stick to whatever plan you have for growing, you'll be eventually capable of slapping everything around. All of the content will eventually be yours, my friend. I promise. Don't go out of your way to invest in specific types of characters for challenges like this just allow your roster to develop and then use the development of your roster to accomplish tasks now if it's a very small amount of resources you have to use 
by all means do so. I will give you one other piece of advice. Whenever you enter a challenge, uh, you do not have to use a f anything, actually. You do not have to use a full team of five. The game will warn you that you are not using a full team of five. That said, you can still bring in one or two characters. And the reason I'm telling you that is because the reason I've been able to go so far in this challenge eight is because most of the time when I do my fights, I use one, two, three characters, and I just make sure Tromgar's strong enough to carry them. I won't bring in the weaker characters, and I'm not going to waste my resources in order to accomplish, you know, this challenge. Yes, it will be worthwhile. And yes, the sooner I gain access to it, the better. But at the same point, if I'm spending limited resources now to gain a little bit more resources, it fundamentally feels like it takes away a little bit from spending my resources on teams that I can use in other game modes more reliably, and then over time just snapping my fingers and having the ability to accrue these additional resources. Most of the time I can put most of these games down to one simple truth. In the beginning of the game, you don't have resources. At the end of the game, you do have resources. So don't waste resources that are going to be easier to get at the end of the game because you've built out a roster and you've figured out which legendaries to work or where to put your runes when you can uh, wait a little bit. That's it. Don't waste your resources early when you know they're going to come up. And a lot of times people fall into that gap with challenges. Now, eventually over time, I will uh, start working on some of the harder challenges and show you guys like these are examples. As challenges become more and more difficult, they may require a little bit more tact, but up to a certain point, I'd probably say up to about challenge level 12, uh, you're going to be able to outgear your or out level your abilities right around here where you have to be at max level. That's when you're going to have to start using real strategy up to this point and then probably even up to this point using your strongest characters will help. And that's something that I think will help everybody along the way. So that's pretty much challenges. Just make sure that every day you do as best as you can. Uh, if you really think you're going to be working on characters, try to wait for the end of the day, right before reset, whatever your reset is, to do it. But for me, uh, challenges are just a great way to gain additional resources. And as you grill your roster, you'll be able to accomplish them significantly easier. Uh, comment below and let me know how uh, wrong you think I am about this. I get it all the time, so it's not going to shock me. Turns out, I'm not wrong. People just don't understand the difference. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Skinjiri, and I will catch you later.